what's up? So GNU Core Utils, aka the GNU part of GNU slash Linux, you probably already know a lot about them, you probably know how the majority of them work, but I wanted to go over some obscurities, some facts, tips, tricks, whatever you want to call it, things you probably didn't already know about Core Utils. And to start with, the dash D flag on both the date command and the touch command. It serves pretty much the same purpose on both commands, which is interpreting English into actual dates and times. So I could do date dash D uh, tomorrow, right? And that's going to be tomorrow, so June 11th. And it's literally just going to be exactly 24 hours from now. I could also do date dash D and I could say something like next Friday, or I could do date dash D two days ago etc. That sort of thing. And where this really starts to come in use is if I ever needed to convert time zones. So say like I schedule a call with somebody and maybe they give me a time and they're in like the UTC time zone. So I could do date dash D next Monday, uh, 2 p.m. UTC, right? And that's going to go ahead and actually convert it directly to my time zone here. So that's kind of useful. And the same logic applies with the touch command. And the touch command, if you're not already familiar with it, is either going to update the last modified slash access time of a file, or it's just going to create a blank file. So I could actually do touch dash D and I can say like next year. And that's literally just going to be an exact year from the current date and second that I run this command. So I could just give some random file name there. And now if I list out the actual modified time of that file, 10th of June, 2026, I could go ahead, remove that file. And you can see that this could sort of become useful, especially with the touch command. If you ever need to be essentially spoofing modified times on files, there could be a use for that. Um, same thing with the date command, you know, actually using this to figure out, you know, like a time in a different time zone, that sort of thing. Um, so this is kind of a cool flag with them. On to some commands you've probably never heard of. And to start with the factor command, which I did not know this existed. I don't know why it exists. And and I don't know why it's in core utils. Like I genuinely for the life of me cannot understand why this is actually included in core utils because what this command does is it prints out prime factors of a specified number, um, which is literally just prime numbers that multiply into that number. So if I do like factor of literally some random number, we've just got prime numbers that are going to multiply to give me that number. I just don't understand why this is in core utils or what the like Linux use case of this is. Um, there's plenty of great commands in core utils that have all sorts of use cases. I just don't get why this is here. So if somebody knows why this is part of core utils, let me know. Um, On to another command you probably haven't heard of, but does actually have a use and that is nproc, which is literally just gonna print out the number of processors and the man page of that it is simply for printing out number of processing units available, so kind of useful. We've also got TTY, which is essentially the same thing, but for printing out the TTY, again, single use command, but there we go, makes sense to have it in core utils. And then another slightly more complex command is numfmt. Uh, and what numfmt is for is for number formatting. So it's for converting numbers uh, from and to human readable strings. But beyond this, it's for all sorts of formatting with numbers. So you could format with padding in order to set up tables. You can do different rounding methods and a bunch of other flags with this command um, to just show you the basic use. I can do num fmt dash dash from equals um, IEC and then I could give like 1k and that's going to convert to 1024 there. I could do 1g or you know 1p etc. Um, I could also actually just pad out some numbers if I wanted to. So I could do like sequence of 1 to 100 and then I can pipe that into num fmt with dash dash padding equals 20 right and that's going to pad with like 20 spaces there i could be padding equal to 100 and then it's all the way on the side there etc so those are just a couple of the num fmt flags but there really is a number of flags here um no pun intended <laughs> that's that's a pun um there's a number of flags here with a bunch of different use cases so this is kind of a pretty useful command i could see this being used in in some scripts and such um, on to some things you might not know about commands that you probably already know a lot about. And to start with rm-rf dot. And that might have given you a heart attack when I went ahead and typed that and pressed enter. But there's actually built-in protection for both dot uh, being the current directory and double dot being the parent directory. Uh, so that it simply just will not work. Um, rm-rf just refuses to remove dot or dot dot, which is built-in protection, meaning I would have to literally type out my current directory if I wanted to go ahead and remove that with rm-rf there, uh, which I'm not going to demonstrate in this video. Um, something else you might not know is that the sleep command 
actually supports sub-second timing. So I could do sleep 0.5, and that's gonna be only half a second there. And then I could say, you know, echo, hello. And it's gonna sleep half a second and then echo hello. And this, I believe, is not POSIX compliant. I believe this is actually exclusive to the GNU Core Utils version of the sleep command. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe it is POSIX compliant, but um, I'm pretty sure it is actually just exclusive to the Core Utils version of sleep there. And then on to the env command, which yes, it is a whole command, um, which I think is really easy to forget because usually we're just using env in order to set up our shell uh, shebangs for shell scripts. So um, that being the, the first line of your shell script. So if I open up some random shell script, right, the first line there is called a shebang because you've got your uh, sharp character, aka number sign, aka pound sign, whatever you want to call it, uh, and then an exclam exclamation point, aka bang. And then you're just going to call the env program and say, all right, the first instance of the bash shell we can find, we need to run uh, this program with bash there. Okay, so that's env as we're most familiar with it, but env actually has a number of other uses and it is a full-fledged command. It is a full-fledged program here with a number of flags. And to start with, you can actually start a shell with an empty environment or run a command with an empty environment. You could just run an individual command. But um, for example, if I just run the bash shell normally and I like echo an environment variable, so I could echo dollar sign display, that's gonna give me display zero. I'm on zero display. Okay, that makes sense, right? I could actually start bash without any environment variable. So if I did env dash i bash, and now I went ahead and echoed that display again, you'll see there's actually nothing returned. There normally would be zero returned there, but instead there's nothing returned because I've just unset all the environment variables when I'm launching it with env dash i. And I could instead uh, actually just unset an individual variable with dash u there. Um, and this is actually kind of useful in the sense that maybe you ever need to test um, with certain environment variables removed or unset, or maybe just an entirely empty environment. If you have some sort of, you know, some sort of glitch with environment variables, something's wrong, you're not sure what, you need to manually start unsetting them and testing. Um, something else kind of interesting about the env command, um, you've got a, you've got a bunch of other flags that sort of make sense in terms of what you would use them for. So, you know, changing the working directory, that sort of thing. Um, but the dash a flag, um, passing argument as the zeroth argument of command. And what this is actually going to do is set the process name of the command. That's what the zeroth argument generally does. Um, so if I did env dash a and I just give some random name here, I could go ahead and run some command and it would be the process name of that command. So if I just did the yes command and gave, you know, some random string for yes to start printing, I am now running this yes command under the process name of LMAO. So I could actually just go ahead and do kill uh, PID of LMAO, and it's just going to go ahead and, and kill that process of yes there. So this is kind of useful if you ever need to be setting a custom name on a process. And as you can see, env actually has plenty of other flags to use with it as well. But I think probably the most uh, useful case of it beyond just actually running it as your shebang in your shell script is starting with an empty environment or unsetting different environment variables. Um, I could see that being really useful in testing purposes. Anyways, that's what I've got for now. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Peace.